What's going on this week in Nerf? Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. I'm Adriana and I am back this week. Thank you guys for hanging in there. And we've got a little bit of news to talk about. Let's do it. Toys R Us is the company that won't stay dead. A new brand management company bought a controlling interest in True Kids brands in hopes of reviving them. And they tried opening up a few pop-up locations, but those failed because of poor mall traffic and, you know, a pandemic. Uh, they hope to open Toys R Us stores in the U.S. again before the holiday season and haven't really named specifics on how they plan to do so, whether it's going to be flagship stores, airport shops, mall locations again. And the vice chair said, there are so many malls that will no longer be in the future, so we don't need to be there, but we could be in malls that do have traffic. To me, that reads like they're just guessing and hoping for the best. I think it's pretty likely that Toys R Us will die and resurrect for the rest of time. Hasbro is going green and aims to eliminate plastic packaging by the end of 2022. They already do some toy recycling and have slowly transitioned to more recycling friendly plastics. Uh, now the focus is eliminating poly bags, elastic bands, uh, elastic fasteners, shrink wrap, and those really annoying blister packs. Thank goodness. Uh, you may have noticed um, more recent releases having the darts wrapped up in tissue instead of encased in plastic, uh, as well as an update to the Alpha Strike line, uh, enclosing the blaster in cardboard instead of using plastic ties. Even the recent Ultra line has its dart window changed into just an image. And some products, like Monopoly Go Green, has all the components sourced from recyclable materials. So 100% recycled paper for the money, board, and cards, wooden dice from responsibly managed forests, and tokens made from plant-based plastic. So it won't be so bad for the environment when it ends up in the landfill where Monopoly belongs. Captain Slug released another weird blaster, the Yeehoo! <laughs> It stands for Your Every Hammer Shot Wish. This is a hammer-primed Springer with a 5-dart capacity. In a lot of homemade revolver-style blasters, the barrels need to be rotated by hand, but not this one. These barrels are actually static, and an internal mechanism indexes to direct the airflow to each barrel in sequence automatically, which is pretty cool. <laughs> It's available as a complete kit for $44 or as a hardware kit for $12, which I'm pretty sure is cheaper than a new inbox hammer shot. And you can get it in whatever colors you like. So that does sound like your every hammer shot wish to me. Orange ModWorks recently debuted the Orange Armory SR200. It's a 3D printed Springer that's Talon Mag compatible. It has a modular design for three FPS caps, 200, 150, or 120, just by switching out springs or spacers, which all come with the blaster. Those results are with worker darts, and it should be a little bit higher with Adventure Force Pro darts. Uh, you can customize the blaster with uh, attachments, accessories like grips and stocks. Uh, they say that the aesthetic and the ergo of the blaster took eight months to perfect. They really focused on optimizing the prime, so the only resistance you feel should be the spring tension. Uh, the blaster feels a little bit heavy uh, because they've added material to balance the center of gravity to the center, so it should uh, feel pretty nice in the hand. And visually, there's a lot of interesting shapes and details in it. There is a two-year warranty and part replacement, as well as free maintenance once per year if you're in the United States, Singapore, or Taiwan. And this blaster is not in development. It is available now with a two-week lead time for printing and individual testing at orangemodworks.com for $150. Guys, I remembered. <laughs> it's time for Rapid Strikes. The Adventure Force Villainator and Adventure Force Pro Darts will be coming to Canada through Walmart.com in May. Both of these products I absolutely love. The Villainator was one of the best 2020 releases in a year of outstanding blasters. It's 
buckets of fun and I'm really happy that Canadians will be able to experience it too. And let's cross our fingers for more releases in more countries. Have you ever wanted your spamf to have a stock point? Well, now that's a thing. Detroit Dartworks has files for the duper spamf stock point on Etsy in both Endstrike and BufferTube formats for $5. I don't understand why so many people want stock points on pistols, but here it is. Hasbro has decided they are not hip enough to venture into TikTok on their own, so they're offering $10,000 a month for three months for someone to help them make videos. I also do not understand TikTok, so I'm out. There is another 3D printed mag release from Tontacles, the Tongled Mag. <laughs> Uh, it's an angled talon clone with customizable sizing, and as usual, it's available for free on Thingiverse. And a bonus, the bumper plates are compatible with the injection molded worker talons too, so you can put those on those mags. It's just awesome. The schedule has been announced for Foam Fest Live. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of these segments and to hosting this year in Nerf. I look forward to seeing all of you there on May 15th. And now for our main story, we have more understandable names for several upcoming Roblox blasters, but honestly, it is just as confusing. Uh, the Roblox Forces Boxy Buster is a $12.50 micro shot, likely from the game Phantom Forces. This is an odd choice because it's just a Call of Duty type game and most of the game weapons are realistic. So I'm not quite sure how this fits into the Nerf brand. Uh, aside from that, the only weapon I could find with a similar name is the World Buster from Final Fantasy VII, which makes even less sense. That's, the, that's a stranger choice, so it's probably not that. That's just the only thing that had a name that was even remotely close to Boxy Buster. And then there's the Roblox Arsenal Pulse Laser. Arsenal is another shooter game with mostly realistic weaponry, but it does have a pulse laser, laser which is sort of boxy and honestly looks a little boring. Uh, hopefully, with it being the most expensive option at $70, hopefully it will have lights and sounds. Then there's the Roblox Jailbreak Armory. Jailbreak is a cops and robbers type game, and armories are sets of weapon options based on your team affiliation. So the plan might be a set of small blasters. For $30, that might be a bit of a stretch. Uh, the game weapons are slightly more cartoony than the other games so far, but it's still very realistic, so I'm not too pleased about it. And then... Roblox Adopt Me Bees. This is one of the most fun sounding and also the most bizarre. Adopt Me is a predatory game with buttons everywhere asking you to buy in-game currency uh, and then you buy animals and train them. The bee is, it, it's a bee. I, <laughs> I don't understand where they're going with this one. Uh, at a $50 price point, it... <laughs> Roblox is a weird place. It's a bee. And now it's time for the mod of the week. And this week it comes from Ravenock with the Dart Hog. And it's proof that you can make an integration from anything. The base blaster is a Rhino Fire, which is a fairly unloved and underused blaster by most, I think. And the handle is a Black & Decker Weed Whacker. And it really does just change the whole feel of the blaster. It makes it look super sci-fi and also seems like it's a lot more comfortable than the base blaster. It just, the blaster just looks like pure fun and I love it. And thank you so much for sharing. And that is all the news I have for this week. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, the links to everything that I talked about are down in the description so you can participate in those conversations and not as usual. Uh, for the foreseeable future, we're going to start posting videos every other Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, lots of areas of life are getting more busy, and honestly, without my favorite aspect of Nerf, the playing and going to wars, uh, it's been more draining than it should be. So we're adjusting the dials of life uh, for 
my own sanity, and uh, I hope you guys understand. And to everybody who has uh, watched every week and, and come here looking forward to this every week, uh, I appreciate you so, more, than, more than words can say. Uh, and I, I hope you understand, and uh, I hope everybody has a great two weeks. I'll see you then. Bye. Okay, now it's recording. Everything is fine. I have, I've done this before. Oh. Wake up, wake up, wake up. <clears throat> Green and aims to eliminate. Eliminate is the word, not reduce. I tried to say reduce. Dude, the. <clears throat> All right, let's find the battery for rap strikes. <laughs> Whoa! Have you ever wanted your Thank you so much for watching. As usual, the link died. It's not even recording. <laughs> Lots of areas <clears throat> about are down in the description. I didn't do three claps for this camera after I turned it back on. Ugh.